Hi, this is Victoria Meyer. Welcome back to The Chemical Show, where chemicals means business. Today, I am speaking with Pam Walker, who is the Director and General Manager of Data Intelligence and Insights at UL Solutions. Pam is an experienced business leader with over 20 years in the chemical industry. She's led digital transformation at leading companies, including Univar and Brentag, before she joined UL Solutions. Pam and I have some parallel experiences in our careers which we may explore, really about bringing customers, commercial, and digital together. And Pam was one of our panelists at uh, the 2023 The Chemical Summit. So she got an opportunity to talk a little bit about digital then, and we are going to be diving deeper into that today. So Pam, welcome to The Chemical Show. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk with you today. I'm really happy to have you here. Pam, what's your origin story? How did you even get interested in chemicals? And really, you were an early adopter of digital solutions. So how did that come about? Yeah, it's you, you trip into the chemicals, right? <laughs> Sometimes. But I was talking to you about at the summit, which, by the way, was awesome. I mm-hmm. cannot wait for next year. It was thoroughly, thoroughly worth, worth the time. So thank you. I started my journey and believe it or not 1994 in chemical distribution and like we were talking about at the summit it was about 1999 when i went to a startup in 1999 was like the first chemical digital boom if you will yes uh, right do you remember i started working on digital in chemicals in 2000 it's hard to believe that's over 20 years ago And it feels like not a lot has changed. Here's what's funny. No, it's not. Because in 99, you you had all these companies pop up. And I went to work for what was an e-commerce company. And obviously, that was too early for that. And and it went belly up with the hundreds of other companies promising digitization of the chemical industry. But the funny thing is, I then went back into chemical distribution and implemented digital solutions for the chemical distributor I worked for at the time. And the funny thing was going to each of these plants and and telling people, hey, I don't want you to go in your paper filing cabinet. I want you to go to your computer to do that. It was like- Shocking. Yeah, right? So then I fast forward in 2005, I went to another startup focused on material selection and discovery, and then UL Solutions bought them. So boom, here I am. Okay. That's awesome. And it's really cool that you've been able to blend big companies and startups as well, because that's a unique experience. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely unique and different. And the really challenge and opportunity is bringing the startup vibe into the big company, which which thankfully at UL Solutions we have. Right. So tell us a little bit about UL Solutions, because I think people might be familiar at least with part of the company, but not all of the company. I know you've got quite a legacy. Yes, it is quite large. Most people know us from the little circle UL on your appliances, uh, in your kitchen and, and everywhere. And while that's still true, but the definition of safety evolved since our inception 130 years ago. And the solution is a global leader in applied safety science and working for the safer world is their mission. And we do it through testing, inspection, certification services, but that's now coupled with software and advisory offerings and supporting the customer's innovation, helping them launch right. new products and services sustainably and responsibly. And, and those are the really the key things when you navigate these global markets and complex supply chains. Yeah. How does that connect to chemicals? Because again, I think of UL, as you say, as the little stamp on the back of electronics, your toaster, other items. Where does the chemical connection come in? Because chemicals are in everything. We're a walking chemical in our bodies. You would, the way that safety has evolved is when you have all the, the regulations and retailer requirements and everything and how we get our products to market. And the more that society itself cares about what we're ingesting and how we're throwing away, our global footprint of, of safety, sustainability, and responsibility really in, encompasses the chemical industry very nicely, very complementary with the appliances and the way you had thought about UL solutions before. Yeah, makes sense. 
You're right. Chemicals are all around us. Most people don't know. Most people working in the chemical industry realize it, but there's still a, a journey of discovery that we're all on. So speaking about the journey of discovery, we're in the decade of digitization and AI, right? With tremendous growth and investment, you cannot turn on the news, look at your phones, turn on your computer without hearing something about digitization and AI. And yet we really still have a very long way to go, particularly when we think about chemicals and materials companies. So what's the biggest unmet need that you see currently in this space of digitization? Wow, that, that's that's a big question. I, and when I think about it myself, I'm going to chunk it out into three really big things. When we talk about digitization, I, I don't think that, that people really uh, understand, like, is it a tactic for me? Is it a strategy for me? And at the end of the day, it's one of the three biggest, is really being able for a chemical company to associate a KPI to their digitization strategy. Because I know it's shocking. I wouldn't think about that, but okay. (laughs) It sounds elementary, but we have to start there. And most people start with wanting to check the box of a digital strategy. But if we start with the end in mind of the problem that we're trying to solve and get the KPI, then that digitization strategy is going to get legs. Got it. The second thing that we're facing is the unmet need for the right kind of data. We talk to both all sides, right? We talk to the product uh, manufacturers, the suppliers of raw materials, the distributors, no matter who you talk to, the need for sustainability and certification data has been absent from many digital solutions. Mm-hmm. And you know, you've got to have this to develop products faster, to avoid reformulation. And those things affect your bottom line, which take me up to my first thing is you need a KPI. Right? right. So that all, is all goes. And then the third unmet need is really being able to take the formulation and certification and regulatory info and really put it into your mm. workflow. And there's a whole lot of data points. And, and like where we sit with UL Solutions, we see it all because we have data that's like the, the prospector search engine for material data, then the regulatory data, then the certification data, the carbon footprint data, corporate level ESG data. We have a ton of robust information and all these things married together really helps to meet the unmet um, needs for companies to yeah. develop those safety, safer, sustainable products and associate that ROI. So it's an interesting, I don't want to say interesting, but it's a different perspective on it. And it sounds so elementary, but when we're running so fast in the chemical industry to chase a shiny coin, if we just Mm. hang on a minute and really say what problem we're trying to solve, it's amazing how much things can get done. And so I think that ties into this whole aspect of what's really holding companies and leaders back from embracing digital, from making those investments. Because certainly when I talk to companies, a lot of them are not making digital investments. Certainly the biggest ones are, or they're making components of investments, but a lot of leaders are having a really hard time embracing digital for their business. So we've all embraced it in our personal lives. Eh, Maybe there's a few holdouts, but most of us embrace it in our personal lives. But what's really holding companies back from going digital? I think that sometimes it's a deer in headlight syndrome is that, what is going to be the best bet for my company? Yeah. Am I going to get true ROI? Do I need to do this for table stakes? Do I need to do it for marketing? And so really identifying, and I'll go back to what I said before, how does this help me achieve my uh, revenue goals? How does it tie into my strategy? And how does it tie into better servicing my customers? Because mm. in the end, that's all that matters is the customer experience, which is going to lead to everything else being taken care of. So I think once companies start there and then understand how the, the digital tactics, if you will, can help to make their strategy a reality, then they could deliberately move and identify the best bet for them. Mm. Makes sense. Do you have data on this? I guess my question is, we think about KPI and I think really about ROI, the return on investment in improving customer experience. Do you guys have any data points or have you seen anything out in the maybe public press, public reports around what the benefits of the companies that are embracing and taking digital to the next step, 
mm-hmm. how they're outpacing their competitors or the results that they're achieving. Do you see anything around that? Um, just off the cuff, I have what I would call proof points in yeah. how we've helped customers do it. And I will say at a high level, if you think about someone developing a product, and when you develop a product, it, I, I always say this, I'm amazed anything that's on our shelf. I mean, you've yeah. got to understand the composition. You've got to understand if you can sell it in XYZ market. You've got to understand if you can put it on the shelf at you know, your major retailer. If I'm going and I'm doing material discovery, who am I going to select? Am I going to select the person or the company that I can extract that information from easily? Or am I going to select the one that I have to takes me more time to get all that? So it it becomes a differentiation for sure. And that differentiation can be associated to, to a KPI. Absolutely. When we talk about what our customers need, and I'll get specific, is that when you can relate it to a KPI and not a checkbox. Most companies want to do what? Get products to market faster. That is a huge KPI. Yeah. And so some customers have their own data. I get my data. Most mm. companies, right? Because I loaded it in their, their filing cabinet 25 years ago. I know they got data. Yeah. But they have to marry that with data we have at UL Solutions to really streamline that process. Yeah. And, and I'll just be anecdotal here, but it's actually not anecdotal, It's but I'm not going to give the company's name. A special materials company, they had a manual process. And so they collected all these different kinds of data, product data, certification data, sustainability data, manually. Yeah. Then they oh manually aggregated it. Now, this is a true story. They manually uploaded it to their system. Hours and hours spent on this. And then data integrity, by the time they did all this, was questionable. So mm. what we did is we leveraged like prospector data, product IQ data, our regulatory data from Kim Advisor, all this. And we got an API. And now we magically put it into their workflows for product research and development. This manual work saved the company $100,000, you know, in Hmm. in a year for just the manual work we're on. So time savings you can calculate. And those are examples, hardcore of both from an external, you're going to be, you know, selected uh, more favorably and an internal, you're going to get to product the market faster and reduce manual work. Yeah. And I think that work efficiency becomes really critical in a lot of this, as well as one of the things you touched on earlier was around sustainability and the sustainability data. And I've had so many conversations in the past week about sustainability reporting that companies are going through and the sustainability data that's needed as companies start to reformulate or just reformulate sounds like a big word, but just evaluate their formulations and figuring out, hey, what are their alternatives? Having the data that can be in the same format, easily understood, and frankly, compared pretty quickly is critical. And it's getting more and more important with the increased focus on it, the increased uh, carbon footprint initiatives that are Mm. are out. So we definitely see some business cases and certainly return on investment when we think about digital there's a lot of options and it's certainly an big investment. I think one of the big things and one of maybe the big challenges is the changed business processes and behaviors that are required. Cause we could put the best system in place. We all know this it's been done over and over and over again, probably in the chemical industry, whether it be starting with Lotus notes and then well, Lotus notes doesn't work and we're moving on to something else. And maybe it didn't work, but also maybe it's just that the people weren't using it very effectively. So you can put any system you want in place, but if, if the people and whether it be employees, customers, other business partners aren't embracing and changing their ways of working, um, utilizing these digital processes, then the investment feels like you're not getting that return. So how do you guys typically address that? When you see and talk to people, how would you respond to that concern about the required just human behavior changes? Change management is real, right? And the the human behaviors are both internal and Mm. external from your suppliers and, and your customers. And the first thing where we start is 
This is a lot of investment in dollars and an effort sometime to uh, resources to implement digital strategies. So you first need to make sure you pick the, the right partner. And there's so many, as we said before, it's like 1999 all over again. There's a lot of startups popping up and, and new technology promising all these solutions. And so the first thing that companies want to look at is to work with a trusted partner. And that is first and foremost, how does that align to human behaviors? Well, a trusted partner is going to have longevity and be with you along that journey and and know that they're going to be there 10 years from now and not maybe a, a flash in the pan, if you will. And when you look at human behaviors, to me, the most impactful thing is getting a solution that fits your business and your business problem and not fitting that business into a solution. You don't want to go buy something and say, okay, we have it. We're going to shove it in there and hope it works because people are going to be going, oh my goodness, this is horrible, right? This is worse than I I had before. I'm going back to Zoom or whatever, whatever you had with that. So as long as it fits in with your business, then we find the human behaviors open it up. My job is so much easier. Mm. I can do so much more. I can make decisions faster and smarter. And so that really leads to adoption. And then that trusted partner along the yeah. way to ensure that they have your back. But one thing is when you invest in digitization, it is an inherent risk, right? But mm-hmm. the risk of not doing it is bigger. And one of my favorite sayings is dig the well before you're thirsty because you don't want to be playing, you want to be playing catch up in this business at all. Yeah. So that's great. So let's talk maybe a little bit about risk, which I know is our, an off the books question here. What are the risks that people should be considering when you think about digital implementations of any variety? What risks come into play? I would say that first of all, as I said before, the risk of whatever solution not being supported over a long period of time, that's right. something that you have to consider for, for real. I think it's the risk of adoption. And, and we talked about that, how to mitigate that a bit to make sure that it is solving a, a human problem right. <laughs> you know, that, right. that is going to help people do their business or do their job better or help your customers in doing business with you. And I think that the risk is in also the kind of information that you're bringing in. The risk is getting the right data and Mm. making that data, turning it into action for you is truly important. I think that your point back to making sure that it's connected to the users, having people involved, and I think it's so critical. So I do a lot of work helping companies implement strategies and their marketing strategies and, and other things. And one of the things I always come back to is strategy is really personal. And it can't be done in isolation. A digital transformation decision can't be done only by the IT team, only by the executive team. You actually have to get into the organization, the people that are using it to understand their problems, to build advocates for like, hey, this is the right answer because it's going to solve problems A, B, and C. And I think it's just really critical that people start diving in Mm -hmm. and embracing more of the organizations in these decisions. I I really like that. It's starting when I always say, hey, let's start with a problem you're you're trying to solve. You're really starting with a human. (laughs) You're starting at the people level. And of course, digitization is is a board level initiative with no Mm. doubt. But the board, the C-suite and all the way down really wants to ensure that the customers are taken care of and and the revenue is not behind it. Right. So we started out talking a little bit about digital strategies and the factors that companies needed to consider in their digital strategy. A recent study by Deloitte, I just saw this from them recently, said that investments in digital were down in 2023. And yet we know that, frankly, 2024 and beyond, we need to be investing. There is no doubt that across the industry, we need a solid digital platform or set of platforms and tools. But back to this idea of strategy, From in your experience, what percentage of chemical companies actually do have a digital strategy that's tied to ROI and tied to KPIs and that they're able to execute upon? 
Some companies are undertaking quite robust data harmonization mm-hmm. projects, right? And building cross-functional use that we work with today. And this is definitely a digital strategy. However, some businesses are now building the business case of, hey, we have all this data. What are we going to do with it? So they're yeah. not all the way there. And others yeah. have a clear strategy of just single business use case. And we see this in our chemical performance and certification management products. So I just want to get my data out there. I want to... Mm-hmm single place to put my product data and I want it across all digital real estates. And that's all I want to do. So I guess that's a digital strategy. So a lot of companies, I think the majority are exploring it, but maybe smaller percent are in execution mode and nailing it. Is that, I think that same article though, Victoria, I think it said, if I'm thinking about the same one, it said 94% of executives said that AI will be critical in the next five years and right. really around R&D and gaining insights and tracking. And one of the interesting things that they inferred or they maybe said absolute in that article is that the challenge is the quality of the data. Because if the, quality of the data is bad, then it just breaks the whole thing. And that's yeah. where we go the trusted partner is imperative because if you don't have data quality, you're up a creek. It goes back to the original garbage in, garbage out, right? If you've yeah, yeah, yeah. got to have clean, good, solid data to use. And then back to your point, and I think I've heard a lot of these stories, but it certainly came up when we were at the Chemical Summit together, that the amount of data that's in maybe unusable formats is the wrong way to say it, but they're, it's sitting in lab books. So there's all kinds of data sitting in lab books, sitting in somebody's computer in a file that's not easily accessible and usable, et cetera. And so there is a huge, frankly, a huge opportunity to figure out how to digitize that data and also a gap, right? And I think about how powerful we will be when we can actually harness all the data we've got that, oh yeah, there were insights that we had 10 years ago. We just didn't know they were there because they, because somebody was holding on to them just because there was no way to share it effectively. In bringing products to market, this data is crucial, right? And when when we do our our chemical data management projects and our our sustainability dashboards, we have to go into companies and get get that aggregated. And then the light bulbs start going off. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize. And sometimes folks didn't realize that their company in another location was doing X, Y, and Z. So you really get a light bulb on it. But one thing that when you talk, it triggered a thought for me is that if you had to ask me the number one roadblock to digitization, it may be Excel. And it's funny because <laughs> Excel. <laughs> Why? I love Excel, by the way. But <laughs> Listen, I have a spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet for everything, but Excel is still saved on, even if it's in SharePoint, you, yeah. you can't extract a decision from that data. Mm. Yeah, and that's so, a great you know, point. My data is it's digital, it's in Excel. Excel is not going to have a, a direct feed for regulatory information right. or retailer requirements right. or any of the, the important things. It's not going to tell you your ESG profile. You have to take that data from Excel. And good news, it's already in your computer and you have to integrate it into software um, stuff. You say that and it brings up to me, I, I use Microsoft, I use Google and Microsoft wants me to save everything in OneDrive. And if I do, I can't freaking find it. Like I'm searching everywhere. And then I have to open Word back up or Excel back up again. Like where exactly did you save this? Because I can't find it. And yeah, I guess that's the good news is that bigger companies usually have better protocols around this. When you're an entrepreneur with a small business, you're fending for yourself. Although the reality is, Many chemical companies really have just a handful of employees, less than 20, less than 100 employees, and they don't necessarily have the standardization of business practices to harmonize that data. Uh, Yes, and it will still, that means it's sometimes simpler. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right? It's less moving parts, it's less human behavior, and it's a very clear cut you know, what they're going to get out of it. So I yeah. think that if you had to look at maybe how to start or which platform to pick or what factors, if you had to look at that through the lens, it's a, it's not a one size fits all because you no. do have 
different um, size of companies that have different needs. And so what is your company's situation, your objectives and your strategies? So that's what needs to be considered. When our, when our customers choose UL solutions, they choose UL mainly from the, the vendor with a proven track record, right? We've been around 130 years, pretty long yeah. time. Chances of us going to 131 are huge. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I joke, but we're a trusted vendor and the ability to like, collect and, and aggregate and analyze across uh, from employee to ESG to product to supplier is hugely important for our customers and, and access to those evolving regulations and sustainability and matching that with the raw material to actually design a product. Hugely important. Yeah. And so, but it may not be important to all, but it's yeah. important to most. And, and really to differentiate your company based on your digitization strategy, that's important. But you have to look mm. at what your company is trying to achieve and then match what you do from there. Makes sense. Pam, this has been really good. And I know we could keep talking for a very long time about all things digital. We're still here at the beginning of 2024. When you look ahead to the year, what are you looking forward to? What should we be looking forward to maybe in the land of UL solutions or in the land of digital and chemicals? What should, what's on the horizon? What's on the horizon is, I think, full speed ahead. And what I mean by that is that there are all kinds of technologies popping up in the market. Mm -hmm. And whether you are doubling down on AI, and I use it in quotes because people use AI for pretty much any sentence. <laughs> and whether you're using that or, or you're using data aggregation or funneling it into your workflows, I think 2024 is going to be extremely exciting from an adoption standpoint mm. and extremely exciting for us to really come together in a way of the industry to offer transparency needed in the market today to bring these compliant and sustainable uh, products to the world. And yeah. it's really crucial. And the first step in doing that, and what I'm most excited about is working with companies to really take the problem that they're trying to solve and strategically tying it to that KPI and business case, and then marrying it with a solution that's right for them. Love it. Love it. So full steam ahead and we'll see how the year progresses. Pam, thank you so much for joining us today on The Chemical Show. Thank you. Thank you. Really enjoy it. I've enjoyed it as well. And thanks everyone for listening. Keep listening, keep following, keep sharing, and we'll talk again soon.